First person shoot a mode, we turning your son to a funeral. So them niggas just say they gon' office, you better be talking about working in Cuba code. Yeah, them boys had a lot, but I knew the code. A lot of niggas debating my numero. Not the three, not the two, I'm the you and no. Yeah. Numero, you and no. Me and Drizzy, this shit like the Super Bowl. Man, this shit done it big as the. But the difference is, it's just two guys playing shit that they did in the studio Niggas usually send their verses back to me and they be terrible just like a two-year-old I love a dinner with some fine women when they start debating about who the gold I'm like, go ahead, say it then Who the gold? Who the gold? Who the gold? Who the gold? Who you bitches really rooting for? Like a kid that had bad from January to November, nigga, it's just you and Cole Super Bowl. I can tell you the least favorite part about this track is that tires drop off like crazy. You get to lap 10 and you got 10 more laps to go and the right side of the tire is just loses so much grip. It's impossible to keep lean angle, it's impossible to keep corner speed and then every time you touch the gas mid corner it's just one to come around on you. So we had a test here a week ago and just still kind of struggling to just do that one lap with a Q tire. And I have all the data and stuff. I was looking at what Top Rack was doing and it's not like, it's not massive everywhere, but it ends up being massive at the end of the lap. Remember in 2022, I came from a long way back in like eighth place to finish on the podium in the last like nine laps because I was able to just close in on everybody a lot because I didn't use my right side of the tire that much. I'm hoping to be able to do that again this year. The, the biggest thing right now is uh, stopping for one, but also just front feeling trail braking does not feel great in one, does not feel great in four, does not feel great in nine. But 10 and five are all right. It's like, it's frustrating because I know that I'm good at this track and I feel like I'm a million miles away when I come in and I see the board and I'm, you know, down 16th and I'm it feels like two seconds off. And then I see the race comparison between like Locatelli and those guys. I'm like, okay, I'm not that far off, but it's like, just messing with my head bad. And I hate being in the back. I freaking hate it. What? What, what I just said. It is true. No, said. don't put me under pressure, you guys. All right, everybody, JC's pregnant. <laughs> you, <laughs> don't say that. <gasps> huh? Uh huh? Huh? She was lying to me for, dude, I got texts and everything. She was making me feel so horrible because I called her pregnant and then she said, no, I'm not, I'm not pregnant. Am I getting fat? I'm like, what am I? Actually, I never said no on the video to you. Yeah, I, I did, but I didn't text you saying, no, I'm not. Those words never came out of my mouth. So who's lying Look, now? But I got these two texts and I was like, oh, she can't be too mad. She's not like putting periods at the end and stuff. Like, you know, with a little bit of, so, so there's not, there's none of that. And I was like, and I thought that was super sus. And then she's been doing a bunch of other stuff that's super sus too. Knew she was pregnant. Gonna be a boy. Gonna be a girl. <laughs> a boy. Camilla uh, says boy. But yeah, the whole session was slower this morning. Yeah. I don't look that far up. It just demoralizes me. I kind of look to like eight and I'll just work from there. <laughs> Mate, I just like, struggling. It's hard because it's like the test. I feel like we, well, I made a step and now I'm just back to before the test and it's like, I have the same feeling as when I couldn't make a lap time. And the tires that I used at the test that felt good, they're no good, and the ones I didn't like, I'm liking now. So. Oh, did you use the 900 again? I used it in the beginning, then I used an X, and normally, well, I still didn't like the X, but I was able to like maintain better lap time. Mm -hmm. But I have absolutely zero edge grip on the X. Like any high side, really? four or five times. It's full lean, just crack the throttle and just pivots it around. That was my problem with the 900. Have that with the X.
But like the drive doesn't feel bad. I thought I did a 40.6. Probably find seven. VDM for find that much time. Because that's what you do on the queue. No, I know. Well, that's... Yes, but that's what I mean. There's been no... We've matched him all weekend on race pace and suddenly goes two seconds quicker. It didn't matter, I was behind him anyway, but like as soon as everybody was waiting on the outside of, of 12, and then everybody went from the outside right to the inside when Top Rack came, and what's his name, uh, Nora Dean almost crashed with Lake Wona, and there was like all this chaos, so I just backed off. That's what I don't understand, I broke just a little bit later, blue turn one, the next lap, I break a little bit earlier, I'm going so slow for turn one, I was like... I'd say probably the main thing is that I'm just so sick of struggling in qualifying because like I didn't do a bad time uh, all things considered it was pretty close to my best time that I've ever done here and the last time I did that time was in 2021 when the track was better and all that but dude top racks time it's unreal I'm just talking about top rack I mean dude I'm so I'm so impressed with uh, with what he did today honestly it's like He's just a legend because to do the lap time he did in qualifying and then to back that up with a race win at a track that, you know, all things considered, isn't one of BMW's best tracks. I mean, it's just beyond belief. Like, I'm in awe, honestly. So, big congrats to Top Rack. He's making all of us look not uh, not too great. So, I think we feel it too. <laughs> I said to him, I, I think two things, I think. Something's changed with the bike because for you to not understand and not be able to go faster, something's wrong. And then the second thing, I think the reason why you can't go fast at the beginning of the race or on a Q tyre is something to do with the way you use the tyre. You don't wear it out. Like, yeah, I could use the tyre more here. I just don't know what it's going to look like at the I mean, end. Like, what, I mean, I'm surprised happened, that what, Michael came all the way back to only three seconds if to you run. Want, I don't know what happened at the start. If you hadn't lost that 14th position, you would have beaten Michael. And yeah, I mean, as, as far as my race, it didn't exactly go how I thought it might go. I mean, like, I, I don't I don't feel bad, that's the thing. And I was conserving like a bit of tire, uh, thinking that it was gonna come back to me, you know, in the end. And it did, but not to the extent I thought it was, you know. I've, I've got like a lot of laps around here, a lot of experience. I've had a lot of good races here where I was on the podium, you know. And uh, I knew the last eight laps that if I just conserved the tire in the beginning that I'd be able to come back, but just wasn't able to come back as much as I was hoping. So uh, yeah, 12th in the end, you know, it's not, not where I want to be. So, but we have top racks data and stuff, which is good to see. It's just kind of making us all scratch our head a little bit, but uh, yeah, we'll try to make some changes for tomorrow and see if we can't uh, show what we got somewhat. I think a lot of it's back to like, similar to Magni Gore, but I like, I don't really know. I'm just missing something. I'm not saying it's completely the bike, but yeah, it's just been tough, so making some more changes. Yeah. It's short time, baby. All right. All right, all right. Remove that freaking smile and... What? Yeah, yeah.
simple, like more easy. No, no, but for me it was, it was really bad. The, the Super Bowl race was hard to see, but uh, now it, it was better and you look for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done. Uh, but I, I, appreciate appreciate it. I, I know you guys were working on the bike all weekend, anyway, man. Like I, job, I appreciate it. And like that quick change of scenery, as you can tell, on a Boeing plane. So fingers crossed we make it to our final destination. But uh, yeah, as you can tell, the weekend didn't exactly go as we wanted it to, so a bit unfortunate, but at least we finished in the top 10 in that last race. <sighs> I'm just happy for three weeks that I get to go home, enjoy being with my friends and family, get to recharge a little bit, do, do some training, do some riding with some, some buddies for fun, and uh, you know, come back, come back to Aston with uh, a bit rejuvenated and, and ready to take on the world technically <laughs> but anyway if you guys enjoyed the video please like and subscribe it really helps out the algorithm push the video to more people and uh we need that it's a big effort and, and to keep doing these videos isn't easy so uh yeah that would be a big help and uh yeah see you guys in the next video coming soon if we make it to houston because this is a boeing plane again <laughs> bruno listen to me this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, okay? Moto California is an all-inclusive motorcycle touring company, one of the best in the world. Don't you dare forget it! So you may be asking, Garrett, what does all-inclusive really mean? Well, let me tell you. Motorcycle rental, gas, insurance, luxury villa, all of your alcohol is included, all of your Michelin star meals. But I think my favorite part about Moto California is that you unpack your bag one time. There's none of this hotel to hotel, all of this running around, packing, unpacking. Nah, straight from the luxury villa and out to explore Italy. Imagine you're riding down PCH Highway. You stop at the local Malibu Cafe. Isn't that right, Scott? You look across the table, you see Leonardo DiCaprio of all people. Anything's a possibility with Moto California. So be sure to check out the website, motocalifornia.com for more information. <laughs>